What is up all stars 456 and everybody else out in the big big internet world that is watching this today? Thank you so much. You're probably pretty cool. Anyway, today we're going to jump into our lesson and I think it's going to be super super fun. We're going to be talking about the tabernacle. You may have heard a church called tabernacle or whatever, but originally the tabernacle was a tent. Now, you may be thinking a tent. Church tent, what does it all mean? We're gonna dive into that today. We're gonna look at what a tabernacle is, what it means for us, and how we can, well, apply it to our lives as Christians today. So let's go check it out. If you're anything like me, guys, you've probably wondered, how big is this tabernacle, right? Uh, you may have heard the stories of the tabernacle before. Uh, when I hear the word tent, I think of like camping, you know, like a two person tent. I might, you know, be like this tall and this wide or whatever. No, this was a serious setup. In fact, uh, the Bible describes it and it says, it's a close approximation, but about the size of a basketball court over here. So it was about as long and about as wide as the basketball court in here. I don't know if you guys can kind of like understand how big that is without standing in the back corner. But let me go back and show you some more. So guys, the tabernacle was like this big almost. You see those white lines? It was about that size and pretty tall too. So you have to imagine this was a very serious setup. So, so let's go back up and see what this was really for. What was it about? Why did we need it? Why did God instruct Moses to make it? Let's go check it out. So guys, the point of the temple was so that God could be with his people. Like we talked about, it was big, right? And it was actually super beautiful. It says it was crafted with gold and the finest pieces of, of material they could find. They created something really, really good. Why? So that God could be with them. We have to remember, this is before Jesus came, and God wanted to be with his people. But since the, we are sinners and we aren't good enough, we can't be around God because God is so good. And I want to kind of give an example of that. It'll look like something like this. You see, guys, we're kind of like this phone here, this tiny little itty-bitty phone. Um, and this itty-bitty phone takes an itty-bitty charger like this, and it'll plug in, and it'll charge. But God is so good, and he's so big, it would be like having a little bitty phone like this and trying to charge it with a big old cable like this, right? Can you imagine if this had enough power and we could plug it in and all of the electricity from this big old cable went in here? You think the phone would do very well? No, it would overcharge, heat up, explode maybe. It would not end well for the phone. You see, guys, that's just an example. The reality is God is so much more than that, and he loves us so much more than I think we will ever, ever understand. You see, guys, the story before this one, we talk about how the people of Israel turned their backs on God right after he saved them from Egypt. They went right to worshiping a golden calf. But God loved them so much that he was willing to still help them, to still be with them. In fact, let's check it out here in our Bibles in uh, Exodus chapter 40, which is the last chapter. It closes out and it says... Now, whenever the cloud lifted from the tabernacle, the people of Israel would set out on their following, on their journey following it. But if the cloud did not rise, they remained where they were until they lifted. The cloud of the Lord hovered over the tabernacle during the day, and at night fire glowed inside the cloud so the whole family of Israel could see it. This continued throughout all their journeys. God set them up so that they had what they needed. He gave them guidance and he gave them light with his presence because God truly cares. And if God cared that much for his people before Jesus came, he cares even more now. You see, Jesus came and died on the cross for us so that we, Sam Bean, and you, whoever is watching, you are the tabernacle now as well. You see, Jesus, God lives inside of us now. Instead of being in a tent or in a building, he is inside of us. When we accept Jesus and who he is, he is there for us. Now, I don't know about you guys, but that goes on great with our theme, right? That makes me want to worship God, right? That makes me want to give him praise and give him glory. Because in us, we are now the tabernacle. We are carrying God around because he loves us and he wants to be around us. So let's worship God this week. Let's think about ways that we can be the tabernacle. That we can carry around Jesus to all of those around us. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I hope this was fun and I'll see you guys next week with our next lesson. Bye.
God spoke to Moses on the mountain and gave him very specific instructions for building a tabernacle. The tabernacle would be a huge tent that the Israelites could take with them wherever they went. God would meet with his people in the tabernacle. Moses told the Israelites everything that God had said. He asked them to bring materials, gold, silver, bronze, blue, purple, and scarlet yarn, fine linen and goat hair, animal skins, wood, oil, spices, and gemstones. God gave two men, Bezalel and Oholiab, special skills for crafting things. Bezalel and Oholiab and all the other skilled craftsmen came together to build the tabernacle. The people kept bringing offerings. Pretty soon, the craftsmen told Moses, the people are bringing more than enough. We don't need all this. So Moses told the Israelites to stop bringing their offerings. The craftsmen built the tabernacle just as God instructed. The tabernacle had 10 long curtains made out of linen. 11 curtains made out of goat hair formed a tent over the tabernacle. Inside the tabernacle, the people made a veil. They made a wooden box covered in gold called an ark, a table, a lampstand, and many other parts. Every part had a special purpose. God told Moses to bring Aaron and his sons to the entrance of the tabernacle. Aaron put on special holy garments, and Moses anointed him to be priest. Aaron's sons were also anointed to serve God as priests. Before, God had led the Israelites from a cloud. Now the cloud covered the tabernacle. God's glory filled the tabernacle. God made a sign for the people. If the cloud covered the tabernacle, the people would stay where they were. When the cloud lifted from the tabernacle, the Israelites would move and take the tabernacle with them. The cloud of the Lord was on the tabernacle during the day, and fire was inside the cloud at night. All the Israelites could see it as they traveled. God told the Israelites to build a tabernacle where he would dwell with them. God wants to be with his people. As a part of his plan to save sinners, God sent Jesus to dwell on earth with people.